you everyone for joining our uh, webinar today. We are going to speak about um, power utilities landscape in uh, MathWorks uh, together with my uh, colleague, Jonathan. Jonathan, next slide, please. So uh, here we're going to talk about, uh, um, I'm going to give you a glimpse of MathWorks Power Utility Landscape. And then my colleague, Jonathan, is going to uh, speak about uh, model-based design for grid forming inverters. And he's going to uh, give you an overview of model-based design and how uh, we can kind of uh, leverage it with uh, data-driven modeling as well. And also kind of uh, some studies on grid code testing for uh, grid forming converters and IDRs. Next slide, please. So I would like to invite you all uh, to uh, take a look at our uh, website. Um, we have a comprehensive uh, kind of uh, platform for power electrification, um, Jonathan. So and the, the a focus of uh, and one of the most important focus of uh, this work is actually on generation transmission and distribution. So if you uh, if you kind of delve into our website, you will find that our system, uh, our uh, kind of software is uh, basically on system design and control. And also it is accompanied by analytics, statistics and optimization. It is going to be accompanied by uh, real time testing and uh, rigorous validation and, and uh, uh, kind of verification. And you can use different platform for uh, deployment as well. Next slide, please. So we have uh, uh, a, a grid a dynamic modeling platform. It starts from uh, granular modeling to uh, system level modeling, which is larger scale uh, kind of system level modeling and which is accompanied by data driven modeling as well. And also uh, it is accompanied by uh, power grid optimization uh, in which we have developed multiple optimization algorithms. It is also on top of it, it has utility data analytics and we have a comprehensive uh, workflow for data analytics as well. So using this platform, you can uh, actually, uh, in, uh, for uh, utility purposes, you can use it for system deployments, power utility monitoring and power system operations. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to my uh, colleague, Jonathan, to start uh, talking about model-based design and uh, uh, providing his demo. Thank you so much. All right, appreciate it, Sarah. So um, thank you all for having us here today. Um, what I wanted to kind of do is give an overview of what model-based design is focused on uh, grid forming inverters. Uh, we've done a lot of work, uh, both with the power utility sector and then also with uh, equipment OEMs that are building these systems. Um, so we've kind of got a unique lens into, um, you know, what's going on on both sides of the equation here. And so um, what I wanted to do is kind of give this overview so you could see, especially on the equipment OEM side, uh, what folks are doing. And then uh, we'll dive into some specific examples. I'll show some demonstrations of how, you know, MATLAB and Simulink are being used for things like grid code testing uh, for grid, uh, grid forming uh, converters. And then also a very common topic that comes up now, which is uh, model validation. So actually using uh, data from the field to calibrate and uh, validate your models. Uh, so model-based design is this idea of you know, leveraging models. And this could be in kind of any types of tools, uh, be it, you know, a uh, first principles model you've created using equations, uh, some software that represents a kind of a schematic representation. Um, but the kind of, that's one piece of the equation here. But the other thing is being able to automate and uh, streamline things throughout the process. One thing that I've seen uh, more and more of is, as we've seen increased grid codes, you know, 1547, 2800 uh, on the IEEE side and specific ones for different reason, uh, regions. Um, I'm based in Texas, so ERCOT, of course, has uh, some specific requirements as well. Uh, being able to kind of automatically test all these different uh, grid codes and validate that uh, the systems that are being uh, commissioned uh, actually adhere to all the grid codes in the region that are um, uh, required. Okay, so being able to automate this and uh, run through those. And that's actually one of the things we're gonna show today. Um, so of course, simulation, of course, you've got uh, kind of the aspects of, uh, you know, simulation. Uh, this is of course, just more like a visualization, but um, on top of the visual um, visualization, you wanna be able to kind of do other things, right? So this is a, a, an example inside um, Simulink, for example, of a wind turbine simulation. And then somebody on the OEM side is able to kind of take the control side that they've built in Simulink and then use our production code generation tools. So convert that over to embedded software 
uh, that can run on, say, an industrial controller, PLC, or, um, you know, some kind of embedded target out in the field. Okay, and so this idea of being able to kind of reuse the work that you've already done uh, really streamlines development and uh, speeds things up. And so being able to test things quickly and then also convert things over that you've already tested to software you can use in the field uh, streamlines this development process. Okay, now we're seeing more and more of this. Um, and uh, I think part of this is as things, uh, as the utility landscape continues to change and evolve, um, we're seeing more and more power electronics based inverter based resources um, in the grid. And when you're developing these types of systems, there's kind of layers of uh, control tasks that are having to be done, right? And so you've got your kind of low level control uh, kind of on your switch mode type uh, level. You've got the con converter control. So, you know, grid forming control, a lot of that, the tasks are gonna live here. Um, and then you've got kind of the longer term control too as well. So if you're thinking about energy management, optimization of resource performance, uh, these are things where you're gonna take in forecasts potentially from, uh, you know, weather data or uh, demand and being able to factor it together. So, you know, having something where you can build a model that kind of addresses maybe pieces of this um, all together and kind of maybe select the mode of interest. Uh, that's something that we've seen a lot of interest in um, more and more these the, over the time. Um, We'll talk a little bit about Simscape Electrical. It's a um, MathWorks simulation tool. It's uh, changed names over the years. If you've used our tools in the past, a uh, long time ago, it used to be called SimPower Systems. Um, but um, core technology has uh, evolved and uh, been uh, updated quite a bit. And so it allows us to kind of simulate a range of different fidelities depending on the application. So thinking back to the, the uh, you know different types of control tasks, depending on what you're trying to tackle, you can. Uh, convert your model to those specific uh, domains. And so we'll we'll see a little bit of that. Um, uh, so depending on if you're looking at that uh, long-term behavior versus you know high high frequency switch mode type uh, power conversion. Um, and so there's libraries of all these components. So again, more on the switch mode converter, uh, low level kind of uh, you know semiconductor type components up to more uh, power systems uh, type components. So looking at uh, you know uh, drives, generators, uh, synchronous machines, and inverter-based resources, et cetera. OK, uh, I'm going to just, and we'll be able to share these slides with everybody, but uh, these are some you know, public user stories that I can share uh, from different customers of ours that have actually been using the tools to do inverter-based resource uh, control design. Uh, and so these are people that are designing um, control algorithms and then ultimately putting them on their systems via the typically with our uh, code generation tools. So they'll design some kind of grid forming converter um, algorithm uh, in Simulink, and then they'll actually convert that over to embedded C code that they can then take and put onto their uh, processor. Uh, we support a number of different processors. Um, I won't get into that today, but if that's a topic of interest, I'd be happy to talk about that too. Um, but we've seen a lot of increased demand in this. Uh, and then of course, um, another kind of, User story here as well is Evlo. They build uh, grid scale energy storage systems uh, and they use full model based design to do this. And one of the things that they were very interested in doing was testing. Uh, and so testing for them was essential. Uh, they are looking to deploy these systems around the world. So there's different grid code requirements uh, for their grid forming control converters. And so being able to kind of test for different uh, grid codes quickly enabled them to kind of validate their controls uh, more quickly uh, and then you know have them in production. All right, so I've been talking quite a bit about you know model based design and uh, simulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop over to the software. Uh, I'm going to kind of go in and out of presentation and then demonstration here uh, so we can kind of see a couple of different things. Uh, let me get back to that slide here. Oops, skipping ahead. All right, um, and I'm going to hop over here to um, our, uh, our Simulink environment. And so this is an example model uh, of a microgrid system. I've got a couple of things going on here. I've actually already run this simulation. I'll, I'll rerun it again here in a minute. Um, but I've got different feeders here. I've got a, a PV, uh, like grid scale PV uh, system here. Uh, I've got an energy storage system. Uh, we'll get into the details of this in a little bit. Um, but this is actually a um, grid scale energy storage system, very similar to like that Evlo uh, user story. And as I kind of double click and go under the hood here, I can get into the specific chemistry. This is lithium ion. 
and look at the kind of different control strategies I have here. So here's my inverter that I have connecting this uh, um, battery system to the grid. And then controlling that, I've got kind of the layers of control tasks like we saw before. So um, here we got kind of our voltage control or current control, depending on the mode that I've selected. And then kind of going up to the next level, um, you know, I'm looking at, say, more active reactive power control, frequency regulation, depends on kind of what I'm looking to do. Um, so uh, kind of a hierarchical type of control strategy here. Um, and then at the very uh, highest level, we've actually got more of a supervisory energy management type system where you know, if we're in grid connected mode, we might have some modes of operation. Here we're looking at say maybe peak shaving or load following. And then we also can uh, you know, have different modes of operation if we're islanded. So uh, we'll look at that here in a second. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll run this simulation again. And this is a full electromagnetic transient simulation. I'm recording uh, different uh, data points here. Uh, so what we're gonna be looking at here is this is the power draw from the grid. Uh, we can see the active and reactive power, uh, the three phase waveforms here. Uh, this is the battery. So right now it's in peak shaving mode. So once the uh, local demand on this feeder exceeds a certain point, uh, the energy storage system kicks on. If I want, I'm gonna issue a command here to island this uh, microgrid and you'll see here now my battery current is actually, we're actually doing grid forming with this, uh, this uh, energy storage system as a local microgrid. And you can see it made up all that uh, power. And actually, if I run this again, we'll run it again. And I'll, I'll throw the uh, island command a little earlier so we can actually do the resynchronization and reconnection too. So we'll island this. And again, you'll see that you know now the current from the grid is zero. We, we've opened that breaker. But if I want to reconnect, I can throw the command. Uh, it didn't uh, instantaneously reconnect, and that's because we had to resynchronize. And then once we've done that, then you can see energy storage uh, basically goes back to zero unless we're doing peak shaving again. Um, and then one last thing while we're kind of doing this is I can actually open this control chart up as a separate window. And what we'll do is we'll run this just one more time where we're actually gonna study this uh, performance of the kind of higher level control. And we can kind of just see where we are. All right, so we'll see where right now we're grid connected. I can throw that island command. Uh, we'll see that this is now islanded. As, and then when I hit the reconnect, you'll see I'm temporarily in synchronized. And then once we've resynced with the, the main grid, we go back into grid connected mode. Um, not going to be covered today, but this is actually something that can be deployed for you know real-time simulation and test. And so that's something that a lot of uh, folks are interested in as well uh, through things like uh, SpeedGoat or OpalRT systems. You can do hardware in the loop and validate you know all sorts of different controls. All right. So I'm going to close this down and we're going to keep going. But at a high level, you know. Simulink itself enables you to kind of do build and test these different algorithms. This is a, just a like an, a, an example of a single system. Um, and actually we're like feeding in real data here, but um, you know, scaling this up, um, we want to kind of see how we could run multiple tests and then start to look at multiple grid tests and all sorts of stuff like that. So let me hop back to my slides here. And we'll start to talk about, um, you know, grid code testing, uh, especially for these new inverter-based resources that we're starting to see. Um, okay, and so you know, there's a lot of different ways you can check grid codes. Um, you know, some of the initial work that we were doing is we actually put together some blocks um, in Simulink to check things like IEEE 1547, uh, some of the ERCOT requirements. Uh, some of the PRC 024 uh, requirements. And so what you could do is you could actually say, have a model here. Uh, this is a type four type wind turbine, a uh, wind farm. And we could replay some actual real data through this system and see how this, uh, the control system and the, uh, the protection system would react to some type of fault that we measured from say a synchrophaser. Um, and so this is kind of uh, uh, results from that. Uh, so you could actually see that. Um, these examples are available, so if anybody's interested, we can certainly share these with you. 
Um, the power of this is all of a sudden, if you have lots of different uh, uh, example faults, is you can start to scale this up and actually replay not just one fault uh, data set, but hundreds of fault data sets. And so that's actually what's um, being shown here is we actually were able to kind of parallelize and run 32 different simulations of uh, different fault scenarios and um, you know see you know what kind of reactive power support was required to uh, stay in uh, and to meet those uh, grid codes uh, so that we weren't you know um, making the issue worse uh, with the, the the grid state at that at that point okay and so you know looking kind of maybe making this a little bit more general uh, you know, looking at say like a grid forming converter type system, uh, we've got some kind of source that could be, you know, battery, solar, wind, uh, kind of in the middle here is going to be our inverter based, uh, uh, you know, system. So we've got a converter, uh, some kind of power electronics, and then typically we're going to have some kind of transformer to uh, scale that up to our transmission system. Uh, and then that could be connected into, um, you know, much more kind of uh, other complexity, right? And so what we can start to do, I will open up an example, is come up with a bunch of tests and actually allow some kind of automation to run through um, you know, hundreds or thousands of different tests, um, given different simulation data uh, and different requirements. OK, and so let me hop back to the simulation tools. And for those of you that haven't uh, used Simulink before or MATLAB before, or um, if, if it's been a while, we actually have these new things called projects. Uh, they've been around a while now, but uh, it actually allows you to open stuff up, uh, control things a lot better. Uh, and you'll see I've got like some shortcuts here. So I can actually open up a model here. And you'll see I have a representative kind of uh, test model um, that I can then now use for testing all sorts of different uh, controls um, and fault scenarios on my uh, grid forming converter. Um, so to kind of go over this really quick, if I go under the hood of my grid forming converter, you'll see I've got kind of the two parts. I've got the circuit that rec re uh, represents the actual um, inverter. And so if I go under the hood here, you'll see that I've got kind of the block for the converter. Um, this is a uh, Simscape electrical block. Uh, I can specify a couple of different things here. Um, this is kind of simplifying the converter for me. I could build things up from, say, MOSFETs or IGBTs directly, um, but we have these pre-built uh, bridges available to um, you know, streamline the, the process as well. And then on the control side, again, I've kind of got similar type of hierarchical control structure. I've got my lower level control. So I can go in here, look into my controller. And so I've got kind of like my low level uh, D and Q axis control. And then I've got a like my higher level control, reactive and active power control. And then actually on my active power control, what I've got here is what we call a variant. And so I have a couple of different implementations of this. And so de depending on <clears throat> what we want to test, we can actually have different uh, control strategies enabled um, for th different things. So you'll see I've got a droop control and then a, a VSM type control as well. And then lastly, I've got kind of this higher level uh, reactive power support uh, control loop. Okay. Now going out, um, what you'll see here is coming out of that uh, the grid forming converter, I've got Transformer, uh, this is just a simple kind of transformer block. I've got the ability to throw a breaker on that too if I want to simulate a fault. I've got a transmission line model, and then I've got a connection into the grid. Uh, this allows me to kind of simulate different cases so I can feed in voltage profiles that I've measured, phase, uh, phase profiles that I've measured, and then frequency profiles that I've measured. This allows me to kind of do different types of scenarios. If there's a, um, you know, frequency change on the grid, um, you know, how does this system react? If there's a, a voltage change on the grid, how does the system react? If it's outside of the bounds, say for some specific grid code, how does it react? Uh, so I can simulate all of that. And then lastly, I've got 
down here a fault, which allows me to do you know a three phase or single phase fault to ground, depending on what I want to do. All right. So right now, if I try to run this, I believe it's just going to run the default simulation case. And so we can take a look at the scope here. And so again, you see this is a, a electromagnetic transient simulation. I've got kind of my uh, voltage and current at the point of interconnection. I've got my active power, my reactive power, and then my grid frequency. Uh, you'll see that this is in 50 hertz. So uh, this, this example is kind of based off of uh, a European uh, test feeder. Um, but nothing terribly interesting going on right now. Um, just kind of a steady state type of thing. Okay. Now, what we could do is actually come in here and start to change uh, kind of what we want to do. Maybe we want to see how this thing performs in a island uh, condition. So we can do that. And should be able to run it. And we should see that type of uh, simulation. So again, we're kind of changing parameters. We're kind of studying things uh, independently each time. Hopefully the model's running here. Oh, of course, it decides to be a little bit shy right now. That's OK. Um, oh, there it goes. It was creating a plot off to the side. Let me just try again. I believe that's the original case again. But um, you know, you can see you can start to kind of um, I think I needed to hit that apply into the model. And now if I run it, it should work. Um, you can see how you can kind of uh, manually start to sketch these together. Um, now, manual operation is good if you have kind of a limited scope of what you're trying to study for your um, your model. So you'll see here is kind of the when the islanding event happens. Um, but you know, if you have many different uh, modes of operation you want to test, going through the, each of these cases one by one can um, be a little bit tedious. And so we give the ability to kind of script things together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a live script here on MATLAB. This actually walks through a lot of different things. But what we have is kind of a review. It's a kind of a live document. It allows you to see kind of the model, uh, allows you to run different uh, lines of code. But what you'll see here is kind of a uh, kind of a summary of the different things we're kind of interested in. So here we're kind of talking about uh, a, a British um, requirement. So GC0137. Uh, uh, we've got kind of specific requirements for this grid code on how it's uh, supposed to perform. And then also write through requirements. And so this is kind of just the summaries of all the different uh, aspects of that uh, particular grid code. And just like before, we can you know, run one test scenario um, at a time. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to be able to run all of these uh, really quickly uh, in a row to kind of uh, get the full performance summary. So you'll see you know, we've got normal operation. Um, active power reference change, reactive power reference change, change in grid voltage, change in a local load, temporary three phase fault, uh, islanding. And then here's some other things where you know we have uh, grid frequency change at a certain rate. Uh, so we can test a few different rates. Uh, change in the grid phase by 10 degrees, by 60 degrees, and then a permanent three phase fault where we basically leave that fault open. Um, or rather, that fault closes and uh, continues to uh, remains closed the entire time. Okay, and so this kind of test bench allows us to configure this and run different tests. So here's kind of the first results of normal operation. Uh, here's kind of the change in reference, active uh, reactive power change, set point change, um, and then this is if we uh, run everything. So one test right after the other. 
Um, and so this is actually checking our control implementation to see, given all of these tests we've configured, you know, what are the active power generation that we've seen in that case? What's the reactive power requirements? And then, you know, it does a check. Are we, are we having stable performance or um, are there kind of undamped oscillations that are continuing to grow? And you'll see in, in this case, the current performance is all stable. Uh, and then likewise, we can do the same thing uh, for grid codes. So looking at changing uh, changes in frequency. Okay, and so you'll see all of this is kind of summarized. Uh, we get this nice report. And at the end, if we're happy with this, we can actually uh, print this as a PDF, for example, and uh, convert this over to a PDF and, and share this document uh, with other uh, you know, coworkers or colleagues. Actually, I believe export is probably the easiest way to get. Export this off. And this will create a nice summary report of all the grid forming uh, checks and tests that we did on this particular control, uh, control strategy. So I can scroll out a little bit and scroll down. And of course we can see, you know, if this is a, a VSM type of controller, how that performed as well. So we checked the different types of control strategies, both the, um, the droop and the uh, VSM, okay. Okay. Um, so definitely a, a, a way that you can kind of streamline the test and automation of checking of uh, controller performance. Okay. All right. And I won't go into too much detail of this, but this can, can be definitely scaled up. And if this is of interest, we do have examples larger scale examples uh, with grid forming inverters. And uh, I certainly can share all of these examples with everybody today so they can take a look at them. Um, but again, this is an example of a, a, a larger scale system where we've got like a full kind of uh, PV, uh, grid scale PV park and energy storage system uh, with point of connection out to, uh, you know, kind of a more conventional source. And so all of this is kind of hierarchical like we've discussed, I can go into this component, I can go into the PV park, and I can look at, say, the implementation of the PV. So here's kind of my average mode. Here's my maximum power point tracking. I can go to my energy storage system. And you'll see this is similar to that other model that, um, that I showed earlier. So here's my grid forming battery control. And then here's kind of the plant level control. This is actually what's um, controlling, you know, the uh, load demand between, you know, the energy storage and say the PV, if, uh, you know, we want to kind of look at those. And then of course there's uh, the fault ride through type of control as well. So how are we going to um, address any faults that might occur? Okay. Uh, so again, I think what I'm trying to get across showing a few of these different examples is, you know, you can build different models here. We've got a lot of examples that are uh, available to be to be used. Um, I'll package all of these up after today's presentation. So I do see a question in the chat window about that. Um, so we'll package all of these examples up as, in a, like a zip file and we'll put them um, in a repository for everybody to, to download and take a look at. Uh, so, so these are definitely uh, publicly available examples that uh, we can share with you. Okay, so, but this is an example of uh, more battery storage. And then we also have kind of equivalents on the, the wind side as well. Let this one open up. So similar type of a example where we have, you know, if I go under the hood here, you know, different amount of numbers of wind turbines. And then if I, you know, keep drilling down, you see we got kind of the, 
the mechanical representation of the wind turbine and then uh, the electromechanical uh, synchronous machine, uh, permanent magnet uh, machine here. And so, you know, if you haven't seen what Simscape looks like for a while, um, just kind of one note on that while we're kind of in this block is that we've got these different color kind of uh, connections. Uh, so like a light green uh, type of connection is more of a uh, mechanical on the mechanical domain. So this uh, wind turbine is providing mechanical information, specifically kind of what the torque uh, and speed requirements are on this uh, permanent magnet uh, machine. And then this light blue is gonna be like a three phase uh, electrical um, signal. Uh, so, you know, we kind of color code these to make it easier to, um, to read them. And then this darker blue is gonna be a, a, a DC uh, current or single phase. So let me go back to my slides for a little bit more. All right. So the last topic I want to discuss today is um, one that we also see quite a bit, which is, um, you know, actually validating models, both, um, you know, phaser and EMT models using actual data, um, especially once a system's commissioned. Um, you know, for things like uh, mod 2627 requirements, uh, these are NERC uh, requirements. Uh, we've seen a lot of interest in this for traditional generation for many years, but um, increasingly we've seen a lot of interest for renewable energy systems as well. Um, and so this is an area we've been working with uh, folks like WEC uh, to actually uh, benchmark models with EPRI uh, for several years now. And so what I wanted to kind of show is what that workflow looks like and then, you know, Again, these are models that you guys can take a look at and uh, play around with too. Uh, so really the, the idea though, for what model validation is, is you got actual equipment in the field. Um, and you know we've been coming up with standardized ways to kind of represent systems behavior. Um, you know, a lot of uh, OEM vendors definitely, um, basically a lot of equipment OEMs, uh, you know, the you know, inverter kind of controls are proprietary. And so one aspect of WEC is to, um, you know, work on standardized models that roughly represent, um, you know, performance of typical inverter-based resources. And so there's components like the REPCs, the REECs. So these are energy converter, uh, electrical controls, plant level controls, and kind of standardized representations of those. And the whole idea is if we get real data from an actual, um, you know, utility scale, say solar plant, uh, we might have like active power response and reactive power response, but the, vol the voltage and the frequency were, um, if we can adjust the parameters in the simulation, um, ideally automatically or using optimization, uh, we can, you know, get much better approximations of how that system is supposed to perform uh, in our simulation. Okay, and so that's what model validation is. And that's, that's an area that we've been working a lot with different utilities. Um, so for example, like, uh, you know, utility scale kind of PV system, if we were to kind of look at say the uh, PV system equivalent, uh, the standardized model representation of that could look something like this, where we've got kind of the uh, grid connection. So this is gonna be kind of the inverter uh, and some of the low level uh, aspects of that. Um, some of the acronyms that you see in this gate, uh, in this area, are the REGC components, uh, A is kind of the first implementation, there's more now. Uh, and then on the electrical controller side, this is going to be kind of the next level of hierarchical controls, P and Q type controls. Um, and then at the plant level, that's going to be kind of more of our active and reactive power, like how we're kind of allocating those, taking set points for an op from an operator um, and generating uh, references for the lower level controllers. Okay, so these are kind of, again, like I said, standardized approximate models that can roughly uh, map what proprietary types of controls are doing. Okay. So let me go back to our tools and I'll show you what that can look like in Simulink.
and we will go to this one. Yeah, and we see here, I think that scope is hiding somewhere. Oh, it's on my other monitor. Yeah, that would, that would explain it. And so what I, what I have here is kind of a, uh, what I call kind of a digital twin of a um, grid scale PV um, system. And so it's kind of running, I've actually kind of artificially slowed the simulation down so I can interact with it. Um, but you see, I can, you know, do stuff like issue a voltage step. I think right now we're actually in active power uh, mode. So you'll see that I issued an active power step and I can kind of see what that looks like. I can change into voltage control. And now you'll see that my uh, PV systems kind of react into my voltage set point change. And I can also issue a reactive power set point change. And so you'll see this is kind of actually reacting like a, uh, a real plant would. Um, now to get to the performance here that actually looks correct, uh, what we're gonna have to do is actually get the correct parameters for these different control systems um, that represent our uh, grid scale uh, utility PV system. Uh, and so if I look here, just at the electrical controller, you'll see one of the drawbacks of these kind of standardized type models is there's a lot of different parameters, right? And it's just because we have all these different potential control loops that a um, grid scale system could potentially do. Uh, and so we got to have kind of feedback loops for all these different, uh, uh, you know, operation mode, operational modes. Um, if I go under the hood here, you'll see kind of the different feedback loops of uh, this uh, REEC underscore A model, uh, for example. Okay, so, you know, one way to kind of get these parameters is just kind of guess, um, you know, you can get some of this stuff from, uh, you know, a data sheet potentially, um, but a lot of this, especially these kind of uh, time constants are gonna require some type of estimation. Um, and so what I wanna show you is a technique that we help a lot of folks with, which is a uh, parameter estimation and how to automate that, okay. And so I've got another example here, very similar to the one I just showed. The main difference is instead of having kind of a uh, simulated grid connection there, I'm actually, I have a what we call a VF replay block. And so all of these kind of uh, cyan colored uh, ports, those are actually gonna take data from, uh, you know, an outside source and allow us to replay it through the simulation. Um, and so in this case, we, we're replaying the measured voltage and frequency that we got from, uh, you know, the grid. Uh, we're also going to replay, you know, what uh, set point changes were done to this particular plant. Okay, so let me show you guys the data. This is an example here, some example test data. where we uh, did a, we had a couple of different tests. We did, did kind of an active power step test, a voltage reference step test, some grid fault data. Um, but you'll see in this case, this is a voltage step test where you know uh, we stepped from 14.2 uh, up to a little bit higher and then a little bit lower and then back to 14.2 uh, kV. And so what we're gonna do is load that data into uh, Simulink or into MATLAB first, and then we'll replay it through Simulink. I've got a little shortcut button here to just load that data. I can load some initial parameters. These are just the initial kind of guesses that I have. And now I'm gonna perform a load flow on this. That's going to get kind of my initial, uh, initial conditions uh, for all of these uh, different control system uh, components. And once that's done, uh, again, the scope is on my other monitor. 
I can actually run this simulation. And again, the simulation is taking real data, playing it through the uh, simulation, and we're going to see how the, the simulation uh, responds to that. So we're replaying the real voltage and frequency data that we've measured. And so that's why you'll see that the measured and simulation data are essentially right on top of each other. And then we can kind of see how this um, power plant simulation responds to that. And we see here that the simulation data doesn't quite exactly match. It's got a similar kind of trajectories, which is a good sign <laughs> uh, to the measured data, but it, it's not exactly correct. And so this is an example kind of what I was saying earlier about you know, maybe time constants and uh, gains probably need to be adjusted to get the model to match uh, the actual performance that we saw in the field. Okay. Um, and within Simulink, uh, if you're using one of our newer releases, uh, we've kind of adjusted the, the look and feel, um, but we have an apps tab here. And under there, there's a bunch of different tools. And specifically, there's one called the parameter estimator. And so I will open that up. I've got a shortcut here to a existing project just for the sake of time today. And once this is open, I'll close that down. We don't need that. Uh, we can actually start the process. Okay, and for the sake of time, I'll go ahead and hit estimate. And then while it's estimating, I'll kind of walk through what's going on here. There we go. All right. So what's going on is I've selected a, a few parameters here to adjust automatically. What's actually, what this, tool does is it actually builds an optimization problem for us. So under the hood, it's created an objective function, uh, which is the error between all of the curves that I've uh, selected. And so in this case, the, the, the curves that I've selected are both the active power curve and the reactive power curve. So I'm trying to minimize the error between both of those. Um, in this case, I just picked one test, but you can actually do this with multiple data sets from different types of tests. And this is how you can you know, actually optimize multiple different control loops uh, at the same time. Try to find parameters that uh, do a pretty good job with everything. Uh, and so we're minimizing the error between these two curves um, by using optimization. Uh, by default, we're using kind of a, a gradient descent based method, but you can select uh, different methodologies if you want. Um, and so What's going on is we're actually running some iterations. We'll calculate kind of uh, what was the best improvement and take a bigger step in that direction. Um, you'll see that actually already in this first iteration step, performance here looks significantly better already, which is great. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit stop estimation. And we see performance looks significantly better. And we can see how the tool adjusted the parameters. Um, over the iterations. So you'll see that it increased this uh, KIG gain, uh, and then the other ones, it didn't change as much. Uh, so that's a quick and easy way to improve performance of simulations. Okay, And so you'll see if I re rerun that uh, from the Simulink side of the world, uh, we get that kind of improved performance. All right, let me hop back to my slides. Okay, and so we talked about how we could improve performance using uh, parameter estimation. Uh, one thing that I didn't didn't have time to kind of do go into today is um, right here we also can build a sensitivity analysis uh, project. I've really seen this being uh, highly useful for uh, especially re renewable energy systems, uh, these inverter based resource type systems, uh, because we have so many different parameters. And so what sensitivity analysis will do is it'll actually build up a sensitivity and sensitivity analysis simulation where we'll run lots of different perturbations on the parameters and you'll be able to find which are the kind of the um, highest contributors to different kind of tests that you're, uh, you're studying. Um, additionally, you can set weights and um, bounds on the different parameters in here too, uh, if need be. And 
as I mentioned, you can actually do this with multiple data sets simultaneously. So you could actually import in uh, that, say that active power step test as well. And we'll try to minimize the error between um, both these two and then these two uh, signals all at the same time. Uh, so you can do this with you know, 10, 15, 20 uh, data sets. The only thing that will add is just computational time because your, your uh, objective function is going to be bigger in terms of number of data sets. Um, but these are very parallelizable problems. So if you have uh, you know, multi-core system or you know, some type of uh, high power compute system or a cloud-based system you have access to, uh, you can easily scale these problems that way. Um, and so if this is a, a topic of interest, uh, we do have a lot more information on this. Um, th there's a white paper available on our uh, website. Uh, so you guys can take a look at that. It's got a lot more details on implementation um, and then also on you know, some benchmarking that we've done too. Um, I'm just about done with my presentation and we'll turn it over for questions. But uh, just as a uh, kind of a quick update, if it's been a while since you've used our tools, um, Simulink, uh, Simscape Electrical, uh, we do have a free online uh, course on, a, we call them on-ramps. Uh, it actually uses MATLAB and Simulink online. It's, it's a web-based version of MATLAB and Simulink. So you can go in there and play with the, the tools that way. Uh, we have one focused on power system simulation. Uh, so that's a really great uh, resource to, to use. It's free, you can check it out. And then if uh, you want to get into more details about this and um, you know you have a, a day available to kind of really dive into the technology, we do have a course, a full course on that as well. Um, that's that's if you're you know very interested in kind of uh, power system simulation, power electronics. So with that, um, I do appreciate everybody's time. I will uh, open it for questions. I did see some come in through the chat uh, as I was presenting. So okay, I guess we can uh, we can start there. Yeah, thank you so much, Jonathan. For